welcome to another episode of GTV. And today, uh, my guest is actually one of my female founder friends. Um, I met her through Ashoka Philippines. So Ashoka is one of the programs that we joined um, that helps a lot of women entrepreneurs here in the Philippines. So, and I think all over the world. So my guest for today is Zara. Hi, Zara. Hi, Ginger. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. So the reason why I invited Zara here, she's the founder of Kubo Modular, right? So maybe you can tell them more about yourself, Zara, and uh, more about Kubo. Sure. So um, my name is Zara Sinjani. I'm co-founder and COO of Kubo Modular. Um, I co-founded it along with my partner, Earl Ferlales. Um, what we do in Kubo is we build uh, modular sustainable housing um, and we like to say that we can build it within four hours. So we use engineered bamboo as our primary material which is known to be if not the material of the future uh, one of the most sustainable materials within the industry. So yeah. Wow, you know what? What really got me? I I went through your site and I saw it so nice. It's really so nice. Um, and in four hours, that's that's wonderful. So, um, can you tell me more about like how you got into this? Are you an architect or engineer, Zara? No. So the reason why it started was my partner Earl actually joined a Cities for a Future Challenge, which was hosted by the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors, um, okay. which is based in the UK. They're a worldwide connection or network of, of, of construction professionals. So um, he won, actually, this mm -hmm. competition back in November 2018 okay. um, out of how many thousands of entries. Now, um, he wanted to turn it into a business and it wasn't just something that, you know, he did it to win a prize and that yes. was it. <laughs> He actually wanted to um, execute it. So um, I don't know why, but he um, went up to me and he said that I want to turn this into a business and I guess that's a match. Like the rest is history. Yeah. So we've been um, partners since then. Um, I'm more on the operation side. So within like the first month or two of me joining him, we already built around two uh, prototype houses and it was just us and like four to six carpenters uh, and we built it from scratch so that was pretty exciting and that was the start of it all wow maybe take us through the mission zara i know that we both joined this social enterprise uh, mm -hmm. program so what's the what's the reason behind it maybe all right so of course there's a lot i mean there are a lot of issues that we see in within metro manila but one primary issue is housing. So we actually do have a lack in housing here in, not just in Metro Manila, but in the Philippines. And we're not just talking about four walls and the roof. We mean dignified housing. So yes. a house that people can actually call their own. Um, there is also a big demand for, let's say, temporary structures, not just permanent ones. So we see that build, build, build is kind of, is, has kind of been the motto here in the Philippines, right? Yeah. Uh, for the past few years. But of course, there are consequences when we keep saying, build, build, build. Where are you going to get your workers? Where will they stay while you're, um, let's say, creating these cities? Um, is it sanitary? Is it hygienic? Is it dignified? Or are builders or developers just clumping them up together just so they can reach a project? Ooh, yeah. So that's also one thing or um, one of the, let's say, uh, one of the, primary uh, targets for this me for Kubo. Um, other than temporary housing, um, actually, another thing that we added uh, due to the pandemic was temporary like isolation centers or temporary hospital quarantine facilities. So unfortunately, we were not able to um, produce um, at this time, but it would have been the perfect chance for at least Kubo to showcase how uh, resilient our structures are. So you've mentioned that it takes four days to build this, but who is your market for, sorry, for? Four hours. 
Four hours, sorry, four hours. Okay, it takes four hours. That's even more amazing. So who's your market for this, Zara? And I've seen your site and how does it work? Just does the end user like go to your site and just order there or do they have to meet with you? Like how is the process? All right, so our main goal is for this to be accessible. Um, luckily, um, the market has adapted to online solutions so we're actually working on our website right now so that you can pay your reservation fee online and the kubo is yours so um, we also do uh, financial plans um, like a condo unit let's say but we're only selling the construction material itself which is the house kit um, we target ourselves as affordable um, the market range is around uh, we're around the market range. So let's say our smallest unit or SKU is around 6.5 square meters. It sounds small, but there's a lot that could fit into it. And that would come out as around 89,000 pesos. So that's the price of, let's say, a MacBook or, <laughs> or a laptop, right? Um, and one of our um, more standard, bigger sizes, it would come out at 29 square meters. Yeah. So that would cost around 299,000. So given that, um, we also market ourselves as affordable. But the thing with housing is the, small, the cheapest thing to add to a house is space. Because True. even if we're saying, okay, this is just like a studio type, let's say it's 14.5 square meters. It's just 14.5 square meters, but it already has your kitchen, it has your bath, it has all your utilities that you need for a fully functioning home. So that's why our prices are like that. Um, but we still try to peg it as competitive within the market. Okay. So um, how, how about the lot? Um, mm -hmm. Does the user like find the lot? And where, are they, where can they find lots? I, I'm assuming like here in Metro Manila, it's so congested already. Yeah. So um, do you like give them advice on where to find lots and spaces? Actually, um, what's surprising here in the Philippines is everybody owns a piece of land so uh, a generic um a generic inquiry qu uh, message that we would receive is hi i'm let's say this I, let's say i'm uh, this is my name i have a property here in insert province here and i want to build what let's say my retirement home i want to build a like a rest house i want to build like a rentable uh, unit let's say it's by the beachfront maybe a, a eco-stay or tourism uh, destination in mm -hmm. that area. So that's one. When we talk about our, uh, when we talk to our clients, these are our, our end consumers. So yeah. these are the people who want to build for themselves. But they're not our only market. Um, as you said, it's pretty hard to find lot, I mean, properties here in Metro Manila. Yeah. So we can't avoid or um, we are working with developers rather that uh, rather to ensure that our units are leveled to a mass scale because yes. the ones making the affordable housing are these either government or private developers so we're trying to tap into that market to ensure that our units are going to the right people and to the most people and to the people who need it the most Wow. Okay, so you mentioned that you created like two prototypes already. So what's in store for you guys for the next months? The few, for the next few months, basically. All right. So obviously, <laughs> there have been hard hits for the uh, for most businesses during the pandemic. Um, but luckily, like we were taking our time um, yeah. to plan everything out to really strategize what um, we need. We thought that. There are a lot of businesses actually in the market right now that had to adapt or they felt like they weren't relevant in anymore after the pandemic. But for us, we felt that we the need for Kubo is actually more now because yeah. we are a resilient product. We are a sustainable product. And you see more companies shifting to this direction, but we're right here, we're in this space, and this is our space, and this is our expertise. So within the next few months, we plan on rolling out our first units. Um, we have leads or we're in contact with some clients who want to build it um, in different provinces in the Philippines, let's say Shargao, Palawan, 
um, also here in Quezon City. Um, so we're very excited and we're working closely with our clients to hopefully um, to hopefully deploy all our units within the next year or so. Good luck, good luck. I'm really excited for you, Zara. So as of uh, maybe let's talk about like being a female founder here in the Philippines. So what are your experiences or your thoughts on being a female founder? Right. Okay, well, <laughs> I always tell my partner who's a boy, wow, it's so hard to be a girl. <laughs> But, and he's like, oh, am I? like, um, he un he's actually um, understanding more of like the things that we have to go through because of, let's say, when we're in, we're, we're, when we're in a meeting, it's like nine um, men and then I'm like the only girl, yeah. or the girl um, especially in the construction industry. Like, where will you find, I, I told you this, like, where would you find a 24 year old in a like in a meeting talking about uh, construction sites and et cetera, et cetera. So it's pretty challenging, but for me, like I I think of it as an advantage because people will listen to you. Since you're the odd one out, um, I kind of use it as an advantage. Like of course people will kind of dumb you down because they think that oh, it's not your thing. Like, you don't know this. My family business has been in the construction industry for 20 years, mm -hmm. 20 plus years. So I'm more familiar with it um, than people might seem or people might think of me. True. Um, but it's not just about being a female founder. It's also being young in the construction industry. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people are double our age. Most of the time, <laughs> people are double our age. <laughs> um, so that's been pretty challenging. But it's also... I think an avenue for us to learn yeah. um, people people my age or our age think that oh um, let's say the older generations have a fixed mindset mm -hmm. and whatever they tell you that you don't agree with you should shun away like it's not like you shouldn't adapt to it but for me like I learned so much just being in a room with all these people um, and I take it in and then I try to analyze and, and I'll analyze it and think that what can I do to adapt to the current needs of the market and yeah. what can I add into like an extra flavor because I have the um, opportunity because I'm young. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Nice. In terms of like the um, construction industry, I, well, I, I don't know a lot about it. So maybe you can give us like some trends that are happening and what happened after like the pandemic or like was it affected and how was it affected and how how can Kubo really help this industry thrive as well? That's true. So within the construction industry, obviously with the build, build, build programs, um, infrastructure, um, private developments, government developments have been on the rise in immensely. Um, contractors, project managers have been fully booked for I think until like 2020 plus plus already. So it's been fully booked. Um, but I think this pandemic totally just shook everyone down. Um, I think it was a good step back because developers had to rethink their programs and they had to rethink um, what their priorities were. It wasn't just about build, build, build. It was also about how can you build, build, build for the future? Building resilient structures. Um, how can you, let's say, uh, move people out of the bigger cities or overpopulated cities? Um, so that's a good step. Yeah. Um, with regards to um, the trends, let's say, in the construction industry nowadays, what we also target is um, construction offsite. So the beauty in modular systems is that we build it off-site. We make sure the quality of, let's say, your walls, of your ceiling, of the roof, of like the little details, it's, we make sure that it's assessed off-site. And when we bring it on-site, um, then we just have to install it within a matter of hours. So do you send people there, Zara? <laughs> Um, we have the option for us to install it, and we have the option for them to install it. It's super easy to install. <laughs> like it was, um, 
like even me and my partner were helping out like we were drilling in, in the middle of SMX or like in the middle wow. of Ortigas it's yeah it's super easy to put up together um that's I think that's one reason uh, that's one target that we had or one goal that we had was to make it accessible but Zara in terms of longevity I think people are also like curious mm-hmm. is it as sturdy and as like um durable as your typical like condo unit okay so we have um we can compare it to let's say um traditional materials okay. so with regards to let's say we're looking at wood um it's much much stronger than our traditional hardwood here in the philippines yeah. your kamagong mahogany um and other uh wood materials with regards to the most concrete and steel, in it's more durable. Um, when let's say there's an earthquake, a concrete structure would break. That I mean, it won't break as easy, but it will break. But because bamboo is made of fi- uh, it's, uh, fibrous, um, it also has different um, engineering properties or mechanical properties. It will just bend. So, I don't know if you've seen bamboo in the wild. They're actually one of the most resilient yeah. plants. They just bend. They stand strong. So, we don't... We um, process the bamboo into engineered bamboo to make it even stronger than its natural um, raw form. Um, and one great thing is it's sustainable. Let's say you chop down an old bear tree and turn it into lumber and you'll have to wait maybe 20, 50 years for it to grow back to the same size as compared to three years. Like, can you imagine um, just for it to be structurally stable? Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Maybe um, for your last uh, thoughts or words, um, can you give like aspiring entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs, like advice if they want to get into this industry that you're in or even maybe other industries what have you learned what are the lessons that you uh, that you have learned and um what are the things that you want them to bring along their journey Mm -hmm. okay well (laughs) for girls i say just go for it i mean don't be intimidated that's one thing um even if let's say there's some times that you don't know what you're doing or you don't know what other people are talking about just Try to dive in, just try to, you know, nod your head, um, try to understand and give your input because it's whatever you want to say, it's always worth listening to for other people. So don't think that you're insignificant or your thoughts or your suggestions are insignificant. It will definitely make a difference no matter how small. So go for it. Uh, Don't hold back. Nice, nice. Thank you, Zara. Zara, can you um can you invite them to visit your site and uh give maybe give your accounts, your Facebook account for Kubo Modular and all of the accounts, please. Sure. So um you can visit our website, uh, kubo.ph. Um, it's currently under construction, but all the details are there right now. Um, we'll be launching our e-commerce website um soon, hopefully. Um, and you can, let's say, look at all the details, um, look at our catalog. You can even reserve your own home yeah. <laughs> if you like. Um, you can follow us on Facebook as well and Instagram, Kubo Modular. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Zara, for being a guest here in GTV. I learned so much about the your industry. And thank you for your um, advice for other female uh, entrepreneurs. So if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and continue to click on that notification bell so that you continue to watch our videos there. So thank you everyone for watching us today. Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>